All right, so today we're reviewing Unit 7 for chemistry. So this will deal with kinetics in equilibrium, right? So the first question says, a few pieces of dry ice are at negative 78 degrees Celsius. They're placed in a flask that contains air at 21 degrees Celsius. The flask is sealed uh, with an uninflated balloon. As the balloon inflates, the dry ice disappears, and there's no liquid in the flask. Compare the entropy of the CO2 molecules in the dry ice to the entropy of the CO2 molecules in the inflated balloon. So first off, what is entropy? So entropy is just the measure of a disorder of a system, all right? So if we think about it, if we go from CO2 molecules in dry ice, which is a solid, to CO2 molecules in an inflated balloon, where they're going to be gas, right? What happens to the disorder, right? Well, the structure of the solid is much more structurally fixed, right? Versus gas molecules, which go all over the place. And so it's not hard to see which one's more disordered here. It's going to be the gas. And so the entropy of the, the molecules in dry ice will be less than that of the ones in an inflated balloon. Number two, describe how the catalyst, the zymase, speeds up this reaction. So we've got this reaction here. And it's a pretty simple question that's just asking, oops, that's just asking what happens if we add a catalyst. So what does the catalyst actually do in a reaction? Well, it doesn't really do anything to the start of your reactants, right? The potential energy of your reactants or your final product, right? You're going to end up with the same thing. So what does it actually do? Well, a catalyst just speeds up your reaction. And so when you have a reaction, let's say we have a chart here. You're going to start off with, let's say, just your potential energy of your reactants. And it goes through with activation energy, the initial activation energy. And then it's going to drop back down and like this. So this would be like exothermic. Or if you had something that was endothermic, it would look like this. Go like this, boom, and then comes back down. And so catalyst at the end of the day is just what dictates this thing right here all that so that would be lowered and so ultimately it would be speeding up the reaction so it decreases that activation energy all right number three state the effect on the concentration of the clo ion when there is a decrease in concentration of the oh minus ion so oh minus is right here so it wants us to um it wants us to state what happens to this when this goes down. So let's think about it. If this goes down, because according to La Chatelier's principle, uh, what needs to happen is this needs to be balanced, right? So if this side, if the left side goes down, what happens is the right side has more. And so the right side will start producing um, and shift this equilibrium position this way to create more and maintain that equilibrium. And so if the products on the right side are being used, that means CLO will decrease. And so ultimately, there's also a decrease uh, for CLO ions. Number four, explain why the container must be closed to maintain equilibrium. So equilibrium is just the uh, forward and reverse reactions of each of these reactions. And so it needs to be closed. So First off, gas doesn't escape, right? Like Cl2 gas, you wouldn't want that escaping, and that would just mess up the entire reaction. And so also, in addition, so like matter doesn't just leave the system. Um, so that is why it has to be at equilibrium. And that's why it has to be closed. So number five, compare the rate of the forward reaction to the rate of the reverse reaction. So this one, because it's an equilibrium, it's just equal and reversible. Uh, number eight, state two methods to increase the rate of reaction and explain in terms of particle behavior how each method increases the reaction rate. So two simple ones here are first, temperature. All right. So what does temperature do? So if you increase the temperature, you're going to increase the speed of the of the molecules, right? It's so because what happens with that, the particles will then collide with each other uh, much more frequently because they're moving much faster, right? There's an increased likelihood of them colliding with each other. Another one you could use is something like 
I don't know, like surface area. Uh, so surface area means that there's more uh, area for them to collide with each other versus, uh, so let's add a drawing. Like here, you could hit it at any of these points, right? Any of these points versus if you had very small increased, smaller molecules, but increased surface area, you can hit them from all these other angles. And so that would increase the chances for a collision. And so let's see what, you could also increase the concentration, which would mean you would just have more particles in general, which would ultimately lead to having more collisions. So if you have more collisions, that's what ultimately leads to having a greater reaction rate. Number nine, determine the amount of heat released by the production of one mole of SO3. So here we have two moles of, uh, sorry, yeah, we have two moles of SO3, and this produces 392, uh, well, it releases two, 392 uh, kilojoules of energy. So what happens if we only have one mole of SO3? Well, uh, this 300, 392 would just be halved to make up for that. And so we get a 196. Number 12, explain in terms of collision theory by using one gram of powder zinc instead of one gram strip of zinc would have an increased rate of reaction. So if we have powder zinc, that means the surface area is increased, right? Because if we have a strip of zinc, it'll look something like this. So yeah, you could hit it from all these other points. Um, but what happens is that if you have smaller molecules, like powdered zinc, for example, look at all this extra surface area where you can hit it from all these other angles and therefore increasing the number of reactions um, and thus increasing the rate of reaction. All right, number 13, explain in terms of lot Lay Chatelier's principle, why the equilibrium shifts to the right to relieve the stress when the pressure on the system is increased at constant temperature. Okay, so this is something you need to know. What happens when you increase the pressure on the system and you have gases, all right? So if you increase the pressure, the system will move to the side with less moles, all right? So that's just something you need to know. And so in our case, if we have two moles on this side and one mole, on this side, if we increase the pressure, it's going to go in the forward reaction, or it's going to go to the right side. So, boom, shifts to the side with less moles when the pressure increases. Um, so, I'll save you from reading all this. Uh, number 14, the potential energy diagram represents reaction 1. This one right here. You notice there's a lot of stuff. You definitely want to read everything, but sometimes you can get away with not reading the little passage background they give you. Uh, so it represents reaction one without a catalyst on the same diagram. Draw a dashed line to indicate how potential energy changes when the reaction is catalyzed in the converter. So a catalyst speeds up the reaction, right? And so what happens is, like we talked about before, it decreases that activation energy. And so the potential energy of the reactants is going to be the same thing, except when it comes to uh, this activation energy, it's not going to reach as high. So just go boom. So it's going to follow the same pattern, but when it comes back down, it's going to have the same trend. It's going to finish with the same potential energy of the products here. So curve down somewhat like this. Uh, I couldn't really cover that for the diagram. But yeah, that does it for the review of uh, Chemistry Unit 7. And thank you guys for watching.